Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Today we're going to talk about how to understand what your water and specifically the color of your water is telling you about your rain cistern system. If you have a rain cistern system for your home, chances are at some point you've noticed that your water may change color, either may be slightly brown or slightly yellow. And we want to help you understand why that's happening and how to address it. In this diagram, I illustrated the downspout drain coming from the roof and feeding an underground cistern. In a, a cistern, we have two different zones. We have a zone at the bottom of the cistern where the sediment that's heavier than water settles. At the top, we have a zone where sediment that is lighter than water floats. So these are going to be two separate zones in the cistern, and between these two zones, it's going to be pretty clear water. Now, the issue tends to come after a rain event. Um, in this illustration, I have a replica cistern with sediment settled at the bottom. And if you have an older cistern, chances are that the downspout drain just pours directly into the top of the cistern. And when it does, it kicks up that sediment zone and confuses those zones so that the entire cistern is now one big sediment zone. This is called turbidity in the water supply. And when you have active turbidity, instead of maintaining these two zones and having a clear, clear water zone in, in between, it's going to be, it's, you're going to have a brownish colored water. Now again, you're going to notice that brown water happening between, uh, right after rain events, and especially if it's been dry for an extended period of time, uh, your cistern water is getting low, that water rushes in and stirs everything up, and immediately after, probably for a couple days, that water just seems murky or, or can be brown. The way to address that issue is by first making sure that you have what's called a calming inlet in the cistern. And this can be as simple as just bringing your inlet pipe down to the floor of the cistern and then bending it back up 180 degrees. And what that does is it avoids water pouring into the top of the cistern and stirring things up. It instead brings that water into the tank from underneath the water level and that existing water will kind of help keep that sediment, that turbidity localized around this inlet. The second thing you can do is have your inlet for the cistern as far away in the tank from your pump as possible. So ideally opposite sides of the tank, your inlet and your pump exist. The third thing that's useful is having a floating intake on your pump so that your, your intake, your, where you're drawing the water from on your pump, is in this clear zone inside the cistern. We have floating intake sleeves that just fit right over existing pumps and allow you to draw from that, that sediment-free zone, which will give you uh, clear water. Now, aside from a brownish colored water, which is usually caused by turbidity, there can also be a yellowish uh, tinted water and typically that's actually caused by this, this sediment that's lighter than water, which is going to be primarily pollen. Pollen will, uh, will rise to the top um, and it kind of dissolves in the water and can lead to a yellowish tint. Pollen is very difficult to remove because it, it, it's like tea. It will just dissolve and you have a discolored water instead of an actual sediment. In those cases, uh, what you can do is uh, Check your pre-filter, and if you don't have a pre-filter on your cistern, we have videos here that detail different pre-filtration options. Um, and then you can add something like uh, this product that we carry called Old Settler, which is just a, uh, it's a powder that you sprinkle in the top of your cistern. You use the whole bottle, and it has a binding agent that will 
coagulate that pollen into sediment that will actually be able to be filtered out inside your home or that will settle to the bottom and, and uh, remain there. It can help take the, the uh, yellow out of your water. Now, if you want something that works continuously to control water clarity and, and improve water quality, the best thing to do, aside from having a thorough pre-filter and in-home filtration system, is to add an ozone generator to your underground or above ground tank. An ozone generator will pump O3 into the water supply, doesn't leave any harmful effect to the water, but it does break up uh, bacteria, it breaks up algae and helps clarify the water. And typically when we're putting in an ozone generators, we're mounting them in an above ground spot on the tank and we're running this quarter inch air hose through the, the top of the tank into the tank. Um, that air stone will, will dangle in the tank and, and you plug in the ozone generator into a GFI receptacle outside. It's best to set the ozone generator on a timer to run for an hour a day, but in running that for an hour a day, it will pump that O3 into the water supply, break up that, that sediment, that bacteria, that algae, and really improve the water quality. Hopefully that has been helpful information in helping you improve your cistern water quality and diagnose water quality issues. And please remember that uh, we do sell all these products on our website, www.rainbrothers.com. Thank you so much.